Okay, there we go. Now I see you all. So uh, welcome. We're so excited to have you all here. And we have such an amazing guest with us tonight. Erin, I'm going to give you a formal introduction here in a minute, but I really just wanted to take a minute. This webinar feels so important at this time. And Erin and I have been talking for months, right? Months now planning this. Yeah. And just the importance of finding these tools to better understand ourselves and from that place, be able to show up in our relationships for ourselves in whatever community and workspace in our family with a deeper sense of compassion, right? And the sense of understanding. So it feels so important given the crazy state of the world. And I know we're all hungry for this information and human design is personally really, really new to me. I know nothing about it. So we're going to be really walking through um, like from the beginning and Aaron's going to unveil a bunch here. So just some housekeeping notes. Um, I always have to mention that Aaron and I are not your healthcare practitioners. So um, what that means to, you know, although Aaron is a, a guide and a coach, he's not yet your personal coach. Um, so we welcome questions throughout. But if you have a really specific question, something pertinent to, um, you know, a, a certain health concern that you're going through, maybe hold that back for the general um, public and try to ask a question that's more general that, that other people can get benefit from as well. Um, and then we will be using the chat feature throughout. Oh, wow, Stephanie, you're coming in from Thailand. I used to live there. Hi, so cool. Um, yeah, so use that chat feature. We love hearing what you guys are saying throughout and you can talk to each other. Um, and let's see, I'm just gonna make sure that we are recording. Um, I know we get asked that a lot. Okay, cool. We're, we're good now. Um, so yeah, that question comes up. This will be recorded. You'll have access to it afterwards. We'll send a follow-up email tomorrow with a link to this recording on YouTube. So if you're busy, like taking notes, you're like, oh, what did Aaron say that part? Don't worry. You can go back and watch it then. Uh, yeah. Last but not least, you all should have a link to look up your design type. It was in the uh, registration an invitation to you all and maybe Aaron we can like drop that in the chat as well if yeah I just I dropped it in perfect if you haven't had a chance to see that um so you maybe either did that or you can do it later and then we will leave plenty of time at the end for a Q&A um but you if you have a pressing question that kind of relates to something Aaron is speaking on in the moment we really encourage you to pop it into the chat and Aaron will get to those questions um as we go as well and almost last but not least, we thought it would be really fun to kind of do an extra little incentive for you guys to all share what we're up to. And um, if you take a screenshot at any point during the webinar, like something you find interesting or something Aaron's sharing, and then post it to Instagram and just tag Aaron at Aaron Claire Jones and at Four Sigmatic, uh, we're going to be doing a little giveaway. And so we'll choose one of you to win um, a free blueprint, which maybe Aaron, you can speak a bit more of what that is, and some free Four Sigmatic product. So that is just another really fun little incentive that we decided to do live. Um, and last but not least, yeah, you know. I think when we talk about wellness, it incorporates so many different aspects, right? Holistic wellness, really elevating our well being. And so, Aaron and I are both drinking um, mushroom cacao tonight since it's the evening. Um, we're drinking our Four Sigmatic mushroom cacao with Reishi. And Reishi is just such an amazing uh, queen of mushrooms. And uh, yeah, really to kind of get us in the mood to support our stress response to drop us in to ground together. So I encourage you all if you want to go grab um, a little hot beverage or something that you can sip on throughout this webinar, um, elevating it even more would be awesome. Okay, and without further ado, Aaron, uh, for those of you that don't yet know Aaron, Aaron Claire Jones uses human design to help thousands of individuals and companies st step into their work and into their lives as their truest selves and to their highest potential. Her work as a guide, coach, and speaker has attracted a growing community of over 70,000 people who turn to her teachings for practical tools, digestible tips, and deeper self-knowledge that they can access to live with greater ease and authenticity every single day. 
with work featured in Forbes, Mind Body Green, Well and Good, and Nylon, words shared on over 80 podcasts, such as Almost 30, That's So Retrograde, Highest Self, and Chatty Broads, and conversations with crowds of hundreds around the world, Aaron's insights are highly sought after because they make human design pragmatic, tangible, accessible, and immediately applicable to everyday life. Thanks for being here, Aaron. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. It's always so strange to hear your bio. I'm like, so <laughs> weird, <laughs> but I'm so happy to be here. It's been so wonderful coordinating with you and meeting you and also really connecting to the Four Sigmatic community. I've been such a fan of your products for so long. So, so happy to be here. And I'm so just like, it's so inspiring to see you guys coming from all over. So we did drop in that link. If you haven't looked up your design, but you would like to erinclairjones.com slash look up. And I know it's going to look crazy, but hopefully by the end of this, it will feel a little bit more simple and practical. So I know that human design might be new, you know, to some of you, I recognize some names here, which is great. Um, but human design is basically a system based on your exact time, date, and place of birth that really gives you your energetic DNA. And what I mean by that is how you're meant to make decisions and work within teams and create opportunities for yourself and partner and parent and all the things. And I find more than anything, human design just gives us permission to be our Cells and permission to build businesses differently, work differently, all the things. And so I've been working with human design for six years now, and I really work with both individuals and teams to really give them the blueprint to how they're designed to operate at their best. And it can feel like a little bit woo-woo. I know that we're looking at a system that's based on our exact time, date, and place of birth, but you know, I part of why I fell in love with human design was how practical and tactical and grounded the information was. So hopefully you leave tonight with some tools. And I would also just say more generally, like human design is a tool. It's not a belief system. I'm not trying to convince you of anything. So I would say, take the pieces that resonate tonight and feel empowering and exciting and leave the rest. And I'm going to ask you, actually, I'll ask no, I'll ask in a second. I'm going to want you guys to type your types in here. I already see projectors, but it's always so fun to kind of see who we have here. So um, if you want to look up your type again, yeah, look up erinclairjones.com slash look up. I always see people be like, I'm texting my mom. So, or their parents. So yes. And if you don't know your exact time, you know, you could do an estimate for now. You could try a few different times throughout the day. Um, and actually, yeah, if you guys know your type, why don't you just type it in because it's happening. Um, so we've got generators and manifesting generators and projectors. Amazing. It's always so fun for me to see everyone is here. So cool. Manifestors, you guys might be like, what does this word mean? You'll know soon. So uh, yeah. What are you, Danielle? No, I don't know. I'm the one that's like, wait, I don't know what this means yet. Wait, you have to go look it up if you know your birthday. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of context into my journey, like I said, I discovered human design. Um, this is amazing. We have every type here. So cool. So I discovered human design in 2015. I live in New York and it was like so serendipitous and strange. I was sitting at a gathering in New York and a man sat next to me and he's like, I'd love to look up your human design. And I was like, I don't know what human design is, you know, but then I was like, but tell me everything. Cause I love learning about myself. And so we looked at my design and it was just honestly mind blowing because the information that he reflected back to me felt like so intuitive and so innate to who I was, but it also felt like things I never allowed myself to step into. And I think what I felt after that night was like just a tremendous sense of relief. I was like, I've spent so much of my life trying to be all the things that I'm not. Are you saying that I can like be successful being exactly who I am. So it's been such an amazing journey stepping into that over the past six years, but the three wow. pieces that, yeah, the three pieces that he shared that night, and you guys are going to know your three pieces at the end of tonight was he said, one, Aaron, you're a projector, which basically means you aren't really designed to be the doer. You know, you're much better leader and guide and manager than you are a doer. And I came from a startup background. I had spent so much of my life, like hustling and trying to keep up. I was like, what? Is there another way? He also said that I wasn't really designed to like chase after things and initiate, but I was really meant to kind of wait to be invited in and recognize. And I spent a lot of my life chasing after. So again, this felt totally opposite the way that I'd been operating. Wow. And the third piece that he shared was that I wasn't designed to make decisions in the moment or impulsively. Some people can, for me, he was like, clarity comes with time, Aaron, like sleep on things, like just give yourself more time at the outset and it will always be worth it. And I had made so many decisions impulsively in the past and basically always regretted them. And so I was just like, okay, those feel like really simple, applicable things. And it's been such a journey, you know, exploring it. So it's wow. amazing to see what you say. Does this guy know how much of an influence he's had on your life? 
Oh, well, yeah, he does. Because he, he ended the conversation by being like, and we should build a business together. So he actually was my business partner for two years and he was my first teacher. And then I started my own practice in 2018. So, oh yeah, he knows. <laughs> Thank right. God for him. You know, it was, it was truly just like so serendipitous and magical. And I think I wasn't really planning to become a human design guide, but it happened and thank God it did. So, you know, one thing I'll just say at the outset is if you look up your chart or say you dug into the system at all, you might've discovered it can feel really complicated and there's like so much information, you know, and you're like, I don't know what it means. And I think that, you know, my intention tonight is just to keep it as simple as possible, because I think at the very heart of human design is basically around how we make decisions and how we choose, because every day we're making decisions, you know, from choosing to show up here is, you know, say you're considering leaving a job. How do you know when the right timing is? Say you're considering starting a new venture. How do you know what the right next step is? You know, say you're considering a business partner or a romantic partner. Like, how do you know if that person is actually right for you? And so I think what human design has really taught me is that it's not what we choose, but how we choose. And when we enter into things in ways that are really aligned with our design, we find so much more flow in our lives. And when we enter into things in ways that are misaligned, we experience a whole lot more resistance. So more than anything, it's a tool to move us from resistance into flow. So we're going to get into the, into the key pieces now, you know, Regina said, finding out my human design, even the basics, total game changer. And it's such a good reminder because while it can feel so complicated, there's so much information. We, we will give you guys discount codes and lots of things at the end to dive deeper. Even the simplest stuff, the stuff we're like discovering tonight can actually be so transformative when it's really applied. So right on. before we get into the different types, I would love for you guys to share in the chat function and you don't have to, obviously only if you're comfortable, you know, if there is an area in your life where it feels like you're experiencing a bit of resistance, where it feels like things are just like not quite flowing in the way that you'd like them to, I'd love for you to share, you know, it could be like career, my living situation, my partnership, like, you know, my family, whatever that thing is. And why I ask you that is because like I said, human design can really support us in moving from resistance into flow. And so I would encourage you to really reflect on that area as we walk through tonight and ask yourself, am I really living in my design in that area? You know, so kind of just using it as an example. So what do we have here? Lots of career, career and love always tend to be the biggest topic, teaching yoga online, procrastinating, partner, lack of it, self-confidence, money. Okay. Amazing. Parenting. And there's so much in human design that can speak to all this. So let's start by talking about the types. So in human design, there are five different types. You saw people starting to type them in. We've got manifesting generators, generators, projectors, reflectors, and manifestors. And I'm going to oversimplify tonight because it's the only way. And so you might be like, wow, I kind of resonate with different pieces. Totally normal. There's so much more to your chart, but I think what's most important is the type really helps us know how we're designed to use our energy, you know, and with each type comes a strategy, which is basically how we're designed to create opportunities for ourselves. So we're going to talk about our type and our strategy and then we'll get into our inner authority in a little bit. Danielle, have you looked yours up? No. Do I, should I do it right now? You got to do it. Yeah. yeah. Do you do know what time you're born? Time. Yes. I know what time I'm born. Okay. Look it up because I think having your thoughts throughout would be fun. So um, I won't put you on the spot too much, but you know. Um, so let's start with manifesting generators and generators. I'm going to talk about them together and then separate because they do share a lot of characteristics, but definitely tons of nuances as well. So generators and manifesting generators are really here to be the doers, the builders, the creators, the ones that really have the energy and the life force that kind of just build, create, and make things happen. Ideally, you would wake up in the morning with a full tank of energy energy, use up your energy during the day in ways that feel like so satisfying and so exciting, and then kind of like crash in bed, exhausted and wake up energized. The more lit up and personally satisfied you are by what you're working on, the more energy you'll have and the more magnetic you will become to opportunities. You know, the more you're saying yes, just because you think you should, the quicker your battery drains. Often both of these types have so many lessons to learn around boundaries, you know, just because they have such natural energy and vitality and life force, people really want to take advantage of it. You know, so there's a real big lesson that like your desires and what you're lit up by is actually meant to be your greatest guide. And it's actually the thing that allows you not only to feel good and feel excited, but also benefit everyone around you. And so the difference here between the two is that manifesting generators are often multi-passionate by nature and often like having their energy in a lot of things at once. These are my clients that are like, I'm a coach, I'm a mom, I'm opening a dance studio. Now I'm starting a podcast. I'm done with a podcast. I'm moving on to this thing. Like they're just meant to have their hands in lots of different things. And so often they've been made to feel scattered or like they're 
doing too much, but they often need that level of kind of excitement and stimulation to feel satisfied and good. Also manifesting generators tend to be very gifted at bringing an idea to life very quickly, but in doing so they can skip a few steps along the way. So it's going to be supported by people that can support them in the step-by-step -step process. Um, and one thing I would just encourage the manifesting generators to reflect on is, you know, part of your work is pivoting. You're not really meant to stick with the same thing forever. Like you're just here to keep evolving and shifting. So really asking yourself, like, is there something I'm sticking with just because I think that I should, or am I giving myself permission to move on when I no longer have the energy for that thing, you know, and generators, pure generators, also creative doers, builders, they often really love getting kind of deep into the process. Like you might like having your energy and a lot of things at once too. So I'll, I'll say, if you love doing it, do it. But often there's a little bit of like, I'm going to go deep in. And then when it's time, I'm going to move on. But I would encourage both of these types to really reflect on you know, where in their life they're feeling the most lit up and excited and energized, whether it's an aspect of your work, whether it is a relationship and can you funnel more energy into those things? And what are the things that feel the most depleting, the most draining, the most exhausting? Can you let any of those things go? Doing so creates so much space. And finally, the last piece on these two types is that their strategy is magnetism. You guys are not meant to chase after anything. Life is meant to come to you and your work is to keep your awareness open and see what shows up and sparks your gut response. One once you get that gut response, you can go after and make that thing happen, but you're basically here to respond to life, not to just like come up with things out of thin air, you know? And so just notice where you're like pushing and initiating and trying to make things happen versus where you're really kind of keeping your awareness open and trusting how naturally magnetic your energy is. Okay. Danielle, did you look yourself up? Yes. What are you? I'm a generator. And how does that resonate with you? Yeah. I think everything you're saying right now, like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you guys, and do you feel like you do a lot of chasing after, or do you feel like you're really, how does that magnetic strategy feel to you of letting things come to you? It feels a lot better. It feels a lot more relieving. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Let yeah. it come. Let it come. And once you get your gut, it's like, okay, yes. You know what I mean? But I just think that it's really about like letting something spark your gut because once something sparks your gut and it comes into your field, then it's like, oh my God, yes, I have the energy for that thing. Yeah. So, um, we're going to leave time for questions at the end, but if you have like a lot of, if you have a specific question of what I'm talking about, drop it into the chat. I can't guarantee that I'll get to them as I get through, but I'll get through as many as I can, if it's possible. Um, okay. Balancers and magnetism. Yes. Is it typical that a multi-decade marriage is draining and is that something to ditch or what? You know, you are like both for manifesting generators and generators, like you are really meant to be like lit up by your relationships, by, you know, your job, all the things. Like I would say, if you're feeling really drained, I would actually really check in on like how you're using your energy in other areas of your life too. Like, are you excited about your work? Are you excited about your friendships? Because often like if you're lit up and satisfied by those things, it will also kind of like come into the relationship. So, you know, it could be normal, but I would also check in on the things outside of it for sure. You know, whenever I sit with, you know, partner sessions with a generator or manifesting generator, I'm just like, encourage your partner to just like do all the things that they desire, even if it's totally unrelated to you, because if they like go fish and they're so lit up by it, they're going to come back and just have like so much uplifting energy to share with you. You know, it's such a pleasure. Um, Elva, we're about That's to talk about projectors. Everyone. What'd you say? <laughs> That's good advice for everyone. For everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so when Delina said, I'm a generator, but I recognize myself as multi-passionate. Amazing. You know what I mean? If you like having your energy and a lot of things at once, absolutely do it. Again, there are other aspects of your design that can speak to it. Um, but I would just check in with yourself to make sure like, are these all things that I have the energy for right now? Or is it more be like this thing today, this thing tomorrow, and kind of allowing yourself to go deep into it. Okay. Let's talk about projectors. Yeah. So projectors, I'm a projector and this was so transformative for me to learn. So projectors are really here to be the leaders, the guides, the advisors, the teachers, not here to do all the doing, you know? So, so much of this shadow of the projectors is like trying to keep up with all the generators and manifesting generators and trying to be a doer. And as a projector, you are so naturally sensitive and tuned into other people's energy, which makes you so gifted as, you know, a manager, a CEO, a therapist, a coach. I, I will say any career is possible, but often you're really tuned into like other people's energy and how to kind of ask the right questions and guide them through that. You know, also you might find as a projector that your energy operates a little bit in ebbs and flows. You're not really designed to do all the doing and work all day long. You might be like, I have a creative burst and then rest, a creative burst and then rest. And so really kind of honoring the ebbs and flows and taking rest when you need and noticing when you're kind of trying to keep up. 
often projectors love like any system that helps them better understand people. This is part of why I think I was so drawn to human design because we often are just like really curious about like what makes people tick and what kind of support they need. Um, and projectors often work really well with people one-on-one. -on -one. This does not mean it's the exclusive way of working with people, but they have this energy that makes people feel so recognized and so seen. And so it can feel so good in that one-on-one -on -one space, but also really checking in to make sure that like that's a sustainable use of your energy. Um, and so the strategy for projectors is really about waiting to be recognized and invited in. Because you bring such a unique perspective and way of seeing to the table, it is so important that you feel like so recognized and invited in to share it with whoever you're working with or dating or partnering, you know? And so you don't need an invitation for everything. Like you don't need an invitation, to like move to a new city, you know, or like make art or anything like that. But when it involves like living with someone, dating someone, working with someone, really important. And I think when I first discovered this about my design, I felt a little bit disempowered because I was like, how am I supposed to be an entrepreneur and just just like sit on my, just sit on my couch. Like, how are the invitations going to come? And I learned that so much of our job as projectors is about making ourselves visible and sharing ourselves with the world and letting the right people resonate and come to us. I think whenever I've like pitched and like reached out to specific companies that I worked with, it's never really worked. So I just like make it my job to share all the time and let the right people be like, okay, you're interesting. Like I'd love to work with you or collaborate with you in some way. So I think as a projector noticing you know, where you feel the most recognized and invited in, can you invest more energy there? And also, are you honoring the ebbs and flows of your energy or are you deriving your work or are you deriving your worth from like, you know, um, just like how hard you're working or how much you're doing? Okay. Let's see. I have a generator. I'm a generator and I've crafted my work to be just what you said that aligned with me. Amazing. You know, and often when we are really aligned, just like self-aware, like we'll do this naturally. Human design is often not about telling us stuff we don't know. It just reminds us of the things that we already do know. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like my husband. So I would say, Jennifer, if this is true for your husband, really good to honestly just like actively invite him in, recognize him, like encourage him to take rest. I have a generator partner. It's been so important to understand those differences. Um, I identify way more being a projector, but I'm supposedly a generator. I would say definitely confirm your birth time. And again, it doesn't, you know, when I talk about these like broad strokes, like it doesn't mean that like as a generator, you can't be a coach, you know, or they're, you're not sensitive to other people's energy. You might be like a hyper empath. You know, there are so many other layers, but often as a generator, there is this creative energy to kind of do and build and make things happen. But I would definitely start by checking that. Do projectors and generators make good couples? You know, I'm obviously a little bit biased because I'm in one of those. <laughs> dynamics. Um, the best. <laughs> yeah, best ever. No, I would say like, you know, I've done a lot of partnership sessions and a lot of partnership work and I'm never going to like look at a partnership and be like, you're doomed. You know, I think any combination is possible, whether it is similar or different. I just think the most important thing is understanding how different you are. I think if I was like, trying to be like a generator, I probably would like really struggle in the relationship, you know, but I think honoring my projectorness and supporting my generator and my partner in that has been so useful. Yes, Judy, I'm going to talk about all the types. We still have manifestors and reflectors. Um, okay. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep moving. Let me just see these. Does that mean we should delegate as much as possible as a projector? I would say as a projector, like dial into like where you feel the most recognized and invited in and like, and then I would hand off the rest if you can, or partner with the rest, you know, or at least just honor the ebbs and flows of your energy. I'll say as an entrepreneur, I've always had a generator or manifesting generator business partner. I've never done it solely on my own. Um, and again, Jill, as a projector, you can make yourself visible, you know, and share yourself with the world and let them know where you are and who you are. But I would just make sure in any relationship dynamic that you really feel so deeply recognized and invited in. Yes, exactly. Shannon, the short burst of energy. Okay. Um, let's talk about, and again, we're going to leave time for questions at the end. I get like so excited about the questions. So I'm going to try to just like stay on track so I can get you guys the key pieces. So let's talk about being a manifester. I see Judy asked about that. So manifestors are really here to be kind of the initiators. These are people that are really here to kind of get things started and get the ball rolling you know, not always here to like do all the doing themselves, but often like just to get something off the ground, you know, often manifestors need a lot of freedom and autonomy and control. And they're really not here to be told what to do or manage or guided in any way. And they can struggle a little bit in a corporate environment if they're being told what to do or being micromanaged. So I find manifestors often thrive in a more entrepreneurial setting, or if they're at a company and just given freedom, it's like, this is your domain, do what you please let us know how it goes. 
things. You might find that as a manifester, your energy operates in spurts as well, where you have this like creative burst where you can do so much, whether it's a couple hours or a couple days, and then you just got to rest. So I would watch out for trying to like overdo and be consistent because your energy might be a little bit more in spurts, you know? And also like just knowing even like in romantic relationships, like not having your partner disrupt your flow, you're kind of here to do things on your own terms and in your own way. And so honoring that as much as you can, you know, manifestors are often pretty comfortable comfortable with solitude and just being left alone to do what they please. This does not mean that you're working alone all the time, but I think having space to be in your own flow can be so healthy. Um, and my last piece for manifestors is that, you know, while you're here to initiate, you're not always here to do all the doing. So also sometimes knowing when to hand something off. And so the strategy for manifestors is really not about waiting for anything to come to you, but really being the one to initiate and make something happen. If an urge arises within you to just trust it and go into it, you know, so noticing where you're perhaps waiting versus trusting yourself to be the first, you're really here to pave a new way and probably a path that hasn't been walked before. And the other part of strategy, the other part of the strategy for manifestors is about informing and keeping the people around you in the loop of what you're choosing and when, you know, if you just start like making decisions and not letting anyone know people can be really resistant because your energy is impactful and they feel it. But if you just give them a heads up, like I'm going this direction with a project, I'm coming home late, whatever it is, people often feel so much more at ease. You know, it can feel like a little bit unnatural, but it's meant to make your life a bit easier. So as a manifester, I would really encourage you to reflect on whether you're waiting for things to come to you or whether you're really trusting yourself to be the first and whether or not you are actively informing people of kind of like what you're doing and how that feels when you do it. The last piece I'd actually share is that a lot of manifestors that I've worked with haven't really felt permission to be like as powerful and big and impactful as they are. And they maybe fall back into like people pleasing and just like really making sure that like they're doing what other people want them to do. And so, so much of the manifestor energy is about being big and impactful and courageous and authentic and powerful and knowing that you might not be for everybody because none of us are, you know, but when you're like big and authentic and courageous, it really allows you to really inspire and impact the right people, which is exactly what you're here to do. So let me know if you guys have any manifestor specific questions. If not, I'm going to move on to reflectors. And, you know, one piece I would just share is that you can start to understand how human design maybe is not only useful on an individual level, but in understanding a partner, a parent, a colleague, a kid, and just like understanding that they might be operate really differently than you. So finally, we have reflectors. So reflectors are about 1% of the population. So much more rare. I saw we had at least one here. Being a manifestor is challenging. I'd be curious to hear what you mean by that. You know, I think that like it really is you're meant to do things differently. And so and I think because you're a minority, there also might be a tendency to try to do things how other people are. So I think that like I think being the first is not always easy. But my God, do we need manifestors, you know, and my manifestor friends just like they like initiate me into so much. And it's just so powerful to kind of be around their energy. So reflectors are really here to be like our collective mirrors. <laughs> yeah, Catherine. So <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Um, so as a reflector, you know, you are such a powerful, you're basically you're taking in every space that you're in and mirroring it back. So you really get a good sense of like how a team is doing or community or company just by how that reflector is showing up. It is so important. And I think this is true for all of us, but especially for reflectors to be such ruthless curators of who and where, who and where they're spending time because they're basically taking it all in. So making sure your office feels good, your city feels good, your friends feel good, your home feels good. And if not giving yourself permission to move on core to being reflector is basically your sense of fluidity reflectors like often might express themselves in very different ways where they might feel like they're a manifester and then a generator and then a projector and then a manifesting generator, you know, and their work is to not try to be just one thing or choose just one path, but basically like embrace that they might feel a little bit differently every day based on where they are and who they're with. And so I always say the best question for reflector is not like, who am I, but like, what feels like me today? And again, you can be another type and have this fluid identity as well, but it is very core to being a reflector and the context of business, we call reflectors evaluators, just because they've got such a unique and objective perspective and an assessment on like what's going on. 
And so as a reflector, I would really make sure that you're in spaces where your perspective feels so recognized and so invited in. So I, I would encourage you as a reflector to really reflect on where you're trying to be just one thing versus where you're embracing your fluidity. And also perhaps, um, you know, which spaces feel the best to you and could you spend more time in those spaces? I'm a people pleaser, afraid of living big. It says I'm a manifester. That tends to, you know, be be true for manifestors specifically. But again, that can be true for a lot of us. And I think that, you know, my encouragement, Charlene or Charlene, however you pronounce it, is that like you're meant to be big. You're meant to be impactful. You're meant to just like be really courageous. And I think when we get to the inner authority piece, the next piece is going to help you kind of assess, I think, exactly where to put your energy. Um, Kari, no, they're not the same. You know, I talked a little bit about the distinctions before. They do share a strategy and they really are here to kind of like, build and create and make things happen. And some people do lump them together, but often manifesting generators gift is like moving very quickly and having their energy in a lot of things at once. Whereas generators often like love maybe perhaps going like deep into a process and like going deep in. And I know even for you, Danielle, like even the example of like, I'm going to go deep into this today. And then like this, the next day, like that's actually a great structure often for generators. Um, and then Sherry astrology uses date, time and place of birth is their connection. Human design pulls from a lot of different systems, including astrology and the Kabbalah and the I Ching and the chakra system and quantum physics, just like all these systems that kind of like this, like become this quantum system to kind of really give us a blueprint. So we just covered type and strategy, and now we're going to talk about inner authority. So again, just to summarize generators and manifesting generators, creative doers, builders, creators, strategy is letting things come to them. Projectors, the leaders, the guides, the advisors, the teachers waiting to be recognized and invited in. Manifestors, the initiators, the ones that walk into a room, you just feel them. The ones that are here to kind of show us a new way and be the first strategy is initiating and keeping the people around them in the loop. And reflectors are really kind of like these fluid, powerful beings that really kind of reflect whatever space that they're in and their gift is their fluidity and their ability to kind of magnify the energy of any space. So making sure they're in a space that feels good. And we'll talk about your strategy actually a little bit later in terms of taking your time with things. Everything clear so far, Danielle, how are you feeling? <laughs> Yeah, good. It's so juicy. It's so juicy. <laughs> Endless. Endless rabbit hole. Okay. Let's talk about inner authority. So this is one of my favorite parts of human design because it's like, just like so tactical. Like I said, at the beginning, we're making decisions every day. And so this is a way to help us make decisions in a way that's really aligned for us. So if you know your inner authority, if you look at your chart and you see something called inner authority, I would love for you guys to type that in now, you know, it's going to say something like, sacral, emotional, splenic, none. Carrie, I'll explain that. I hate that it says none. So annoying. Okay, cool. Ego manifested. Fabulous. Okay. So inner authority, I know this share, I, I don't use the language Shannon of none. So I'm going to, I'm going to break that down for you guys, what that actually means. So, and Daniel, what are you? Are you sacral or emotional? Sacral. Cool. Let's start with sacral. So if you're a sacral decision maker, it means that you're designed to trust your gut response in the moment. You know, there's so much talk out there of like, you know, follow your gut, listen to your gut. And like, and not all of us have access to that, like immediate clarity in our gut but for sacral people. It is all about your gut response in the moment. And the gut tends to show up as a very visceral feeling in your belly, where you either feel like an expansion, excitement, rising of energy, or kind of like a contraction and like a pulling away. It's like an excited, buzz and uncomfortable, not your body opening up, showing, shutting down. And it happens in the moment. If you're not getting a full body gut response in the moment, it either means it is not the right thing or it's not the right time yet. So you might be like, doesn't feel right. doesn't feel right. And then a week later, you're like, it's time, you know, and so really trusting that and knowing that the gut never comes with a reason. And so if you find yourself like rationalizing a decision or being like, I really think that I should do this because of this, that is not your gut speaking. The gut sounds like this thing feels right or it doesn't. I don't know why we'll find out why later, you know, and a really powerful way to access your gut response is to have the people around you ask you very specific questions. So like Danielle and I were like going to go hang out one day instead of being like, where do you want to go? I'd be like, do you want to go to the beach or you want to go to the park? You know, do you want to go at this restaurant or this one? Like giving you options and giving you a thing to respond to allows you to be like, that feels right. That doesn't. Whereas like, if I ask you to open it a question, you're like, I don't know, anything's possible. You know, right. so it's really, really powerful as a way to just immediately access their truth. And again, it's so powerful, not only to understand your own inner authority, but those of the people around you so that you can support them in accessing that. Danielle, how's that feel to you? Do you feel that connection? So much. Yeah. yeah. And it's so it's such a simple thing, like such a small example. So and hearing it when you're like, 
do you want to do this or this? That's such an easy decision. It's like, oh, let me just tune in for one second. And like, that feels a little better. Let's go that way. Versus I would have that exact response. If you're like, what do you want to do today? I'm like, literally the world is our oyster. Like, what do you mean? What kind of question is that? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, when I work with teams and people have this, you know, it's like if, if an employee asks them that, I'm always reminded to like tell people, it's not that I don't know. I just need you to ask me in a different way. Like, give me options, give me a thing to respond to, and I'll know, you know? And so it can be so simple, but it is a way of so directly accessing your truth. And so this inner authority is only possible for generators and manifesting generators. And I would just encourage you to reflect on one, whether you feel connected to your gut response, because sometimes we can like really become numb to that over time if we're not trusting it. And two, is it something that you're really trusting and listening and letting guide you? And again, our minds are powerful. My point is not to dismiss the power of like pro con list, but our minds like are so powerful that we can probably convince ourselves in or out of anything, you know? And so this is a way to just be like, do I really have the energy for this thing? Um, Callie, yes. Let me, let me clarify this now. So if you're an emotional decision maker, which is a lot, you can see, and this is the same as emotional solar plexus. This is possible for every single type, but reflectors. It means that you are not designed to make big decisions in the moment. Clarity for you comes with time. The best thing that you can do is sleep on it. I know that like that might not be feasible for like daily decisions, but for those big ones, like is this the right client? You know, should we move? Like, is this a good partner for you? Like just like taking your time and taking space allows you to like land in a real place of like, this just feels right. You know, I find that as an emotional decision maker myself, like it's very natural for us to have highs and lows and not always know why. And like, when I'm on a high, I'm like, I'm yes to everything. And then I wake up the next day and I'm like, I regret it all, you know? And like, you know, the opposite on the low. And so I really learned to just like give myself like 24 hours, even just a couple hours sometimes to just to land in, like, do I really have the energy for this thing? You know? And I think also when we talk about romantic relationships, like really having a period of courtship, really feeling into somebody. And you can, again, start to see in relationships, somebody might be sacral. They're like, I'm in, let's go. And the emotional person's like, Ooh, one moment. Can we talk tomorrow? You know, so really honoring <laughs> the different paces at which you move. And Callie asked about whether those specific yes, no questions can be used for emotional decision makers. So ge- emotional generators. So without complicating things too much, if you are a generator or manifesting generator and you have an emotional solar plexus decision-making inner authority, it means you still have a really strong gut response. The only difference for you is gut response over time you know? And so it's basically just like, I would say, Callie, like, yes, ask you that question the day of, and then ask you that question again the next day and see how, and if the response has shifted, can you be a little bit of both? Because I am, I think that like, you know, it depends. I, I would need to like talk to you about it. I think that like, when I say that you need to take time with decisions, it doesn't actually mean that your initial instinct is incorrect. It just means that you often need like a little bit of time to verify and make sure you're making a decision from like an emotionally calm and clear and more neutral place. Um, and so, yeah, there might be a balance where like these ones I can decide really quickly. These ones I need a little bit more time. But for me, just like the practice of sleeping on it always kind of just like brings, it's basically like zoom back and see the full picture. Um, okay, let's talk about splenic. So if you are a splenic decision maker, this is possible for projectors or manifestors. And if you're a splenic decision maker, it is basically all about trusting your intuition in the moment. Intuition is different than the gut response in the context of human design. I know a lot of people might collapse them together. Totally makes sense. But intuition is basically a quiet knowing. It's like, it's not that visceral gut feeling. It's like a resonance that you feel like tingles that you feel like a voice that you hear. Just like, it's so spontaneous and comes out of nowhere and then disappears just as quickly. And so, you know, while I would recommend the emotional people to just like sleep on it, I would actually recommend the splenic people to be super spontaneous and really impulsive because like, there's just such clarity in the moment for you. And of all the inner authorities, Mark, like this is the absolute (laughs) quietest. And so I think having any practice that helps you get quiet to hear your intuition, whether it is, you know, meditation, being in nature around other people, like as a way to just like disconnect from other people's energy and be like, but what do I intuitively feel, you know? And so really having practices that help you quiet down. And then as soon as you hear it acting. And so the questions I would ask you is, are you connected to your intuition? Do you have practices that help you hear it? And second, are you really trusting it? And Samira, you said I'm splenic, but I'm so indecisive. Um, 
my guess, and maybe I'm incorrect here, is you probably get an intuitive hit and then you get in your head about it and just like, you know, talk yourself out of it. And so that can become really confusing. And so like your mind is really going to easily get in the way and try to rationalize and talk you in or out of a certain thing. And the work is to run it, really tune into kind of that spontaneous impulse and trust that. Mark, I love that long walks, 100%. Regina projector splenic. So actually sleep on it was just one possible strategy of projectors. So the inner authority, how we make decisions, it is kind of like, there are certain options, you know, <clears throat> for each type, but not every type is going to have the same inner authority. So like I'm an emotional projector. You could be a splenic projector, self-projected, none, all those things. Okay. So, so far again, emotional sleep on it for big decisions, especially sacral, trust your gut response in the moment, splenic intuition, spontaneous knowing, get quiet enough to hear it. If you're a self-projected decision maker, Lisa, I see your definition. Definition is actually another piece. You guys are probably noticing there are a bajillion pieces. So I'm happy <laughs> to talk about that at the questions. And again, I'll give you guys resources to dive in deeper at the end. Right on. So if you're a self-projected decision maker, this is only possible for projectors. It means that, you know, your truth really comes when you give it a voice. You know, the best thing that you can do is talk things out, you know, surround yourself by people that you trust and just say things out loud, you know, and it's not because you're looking to other people for answers. You're basically just using them as a sounding board. So you could say it out loud and be like, hmm, feels good. Doesn't, you know, and even voice recording journaling can be really useful. And I would even say with people that you really trust, like, partners, family members, friends, like even asking them, like, I really just need you to listen right now. I'm not looking for advice. Ask me questions if you'd like, but I literally just need to say it out loud. And for these people, their identity is so connected to their decision-making. And so it's so useful to kind of ask yourself questions like, will this decision allow my self-expression? Will it allow my creativity? Will it like really move me in the right direction? It is so important that you feel so authentically self-expressed in whatever it is you do. Mark said, I know it drives my partner crazy. Voice memos are my best friend. I love it. Wow, that is so perfect. I've been doing that for years and even sending me coworkers that I need to think out loud. Exactly. You know, so not making yourself wrong for that, but just like giving yourself full permission. And again, like maybe it's just voice recording sometimes and you don't have to be around other people. Therapy, coach, all could be good for this. Okay. If you're an ego decision maker, this is possible for manifestors and projectors. we got three more here and then we'll open it up. So ego decision makers are really designed to make decisions based on like their desires, like what they really desire, like whether or not their heart is in something when their heart is in something, they can like literally do anything. They can like move mountains, you know? And so really asking yourself, like, is my heart in this? Do I really have the willpower to make this happen? And also does this decision really take care of me? These people are meant to be very healthily selfish in their decision-making. And so not committing to a thing where like, they're not taking care of in return. Also for these people, their energy can operate in spurts a bit. So I would make sure that you take rest before you make another big commitment. If you are none and it says projector, it means that you are what we call an environmental or a mental projector. And it means that you also need to talk things out, but you're somebody who's incredibly sensitive to your physical space. And so it's often healthy to kind of talk things out in a few different spaces and see how it feels like in spaces that feel good around people that feel good having them just serve as a sounding board. But like, again, just kind of sampling it in a few different spaces to kind of see what truth and clarity you land on. And finally, if you are a reflector, we call this a lunar decision maker. You're actually designed to give yourself a full 28 to 30 days before you make a big decision. I know that sounds a little bit wild. And I just want to caveat that by saying, I know that's not always feasible to be like, thanks for the job offer. I'll let you know in a month, you know, like they might want to take someone else, you know, but I just think that like, there's such an amazing process that you go through when you really sample a decision over a couple of weeks to really kind of assess whether or not it's correct for you talking things out in that time. So while you might not always be able to give yourself a full 20 to 30 days, I would just make sure that you're giving yourself as much time as you can and that you're not like succumbing to the pressure other people are putting on you to make decisions that are too quick for you. So quick summary emotion, sleep on it, sacral, trust your gut response in the moment, intuition, your intuitive knowing in the moment, self projected, talk things out, let it come through your voice ego, trust what your heart is directing you towards, what you really desire, what takes care of you, none or mental for projectors, talk things out in a few different spaces that really feel good because you're so sensitive to your space and reflect or give yourself as much time as you can to really kind of just like sample a decision and experience it from so many different pieces or different angles from yourself to really assess whether or not it's correct. So let me do all that makes sense, Danielle. Yes. There's so I know. much there. I'm like, it's like the very tip of the iceberg. I know, and right? Amazing, even to see these few reflections of people like, wow, that makes sense. You know, know, for me, I'm like, I hate voice memos. And people are like, what? It's such an easy way to communicate. And to have that 
you know, as we've said from the beginning, this tool to understand and then how much compassion that opens for, oh, it's not that, you know, someone's just doing something. That's what they're innately here to do and express in that way. Just Isn't so that cool. amazing? Yeah. And it's just like such a reminder that we're all here to do things differently. And I think we often get so tripped up in business and like life when we really are expecting people to operate more similar to us or different than what they are. But when we really kind of like honor how different they are, it's so magical. This is why I love working with teams. You know, you can imagine you have like a manifesting generator boss and like, why is everyone not moving so fast? <laughs> why are they not doing so much? It's like, because they're not meant to, you know? So I think just like it really creates, I think you even said this at the beginning, like it creates so much compassion and understanding. And right. I think my favorite part of human design. Catherine, I see your question when we, I'll get to that in a second. I think that, um, more than anything, human design gives us permission to be ourselves. And often when I sit with people, I'm not telling them anything they don't know. I'm just giving them a language and a framework to validate all the things they've always known and never really given themselves full permission to step into. They're like, Oh my God, really? I can do that. Okay. So I think just like a few things to close. Um, and I love your questions. I'm going to answer them in a second. I think, you know, one thing when we really understand our design, we can use it in like every decision that we make from how we're building businesses to choosing friends, opportunities, all the things. And it really just gives us both like the, a language and a framework, but also the tools to really just find our flow, you know? And I think it's such a reminder that we're all meant to build businesses and market and parent and partner differently. Like you're saying, like you might be taking a business course from like a manifesting generator and you're like, wow, why is this not working for me? Like we're just all meant to do it differently. And I think human design reminds us of that. It gives us our unique roadmap and it always turns us inward to ourselves. Like human design is not predictive. I do not sit with people and tell them where they'll be in five years or like that they're meant to be a dentist, but like I can tell them how to assess that thing for themselves, where they'll likely thrive and what their innate strengths are. Um, so yeah. Okay. So if you guys ever want to go deeper, we did create a discount code for you guys. I share a lot on Instagram at Aaron Claire Jones website is Aaron Claire Jones.com, but we created a discount code on the blueprint, which is basically a 30 plus page PDF written guide to your unique design. I make each of them and it basically is really meant to be a very practical, accessible guide to just like, this is your design. These are the things you need to know, you know, in the most just like grounded way in a way that you can keep returning to. So it covers your type, your strategy, your authority, your definition, all those weird little centers, those channels, the profile. Um, it's really meant to kind of be an operating manual to you. So the discount code is four sigmatic, right? I think that's what that's I created. It. Okay. I'm just going to put the link here. The discount code is four sigmatic. The discount code also applies for a workshop I'm doing next week, which is really a immersive with an intimate group to explore how to use our design to move from resistance into flow um, based on those like energy centers. And then I also offer sessions. So all that stuff is there. Okay. How are you feeling, Danielle? Should I get into the questions? I know it's a lot, but I just like throwing yeah. it all in there. And I know that I talk fast, you guys um, trying to slow down, but know that the recording is there as well. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And I'm really excited about this question from Catherine about, you know, what about Catherine's asking, what about types and eating patterns or exercises that benefit them? Because from my perspective as an herbalist and nutritionist, and I've studied Ayurveda and all these different types, you know, we recognize through all systems of especially traditional folk medicine, that there are different body types. And with that, and I, you know, so looking at it, whether it's, different doshas and Ayurveda or constitutions and Western herbalism, you know, and TCM, it's like no body is unique or no body is the same. Everybody is unique. And so, yeah, I'm so curious about how to kind of meld these worlds of what we're putting in our body. And obviously, you know, we're superfood fanatics. And so, yeah, I'd love to dive into that intersection a little bit. Totally. So it, there is a lot that human design has to say about food. And it's often, I will say not the first piece that I recommend diving into, because often once we like integrate our design, then it becomes even more impactful down the road. Um, and even actually, when you look at that chart, it's not even there. You actually have to like go into a deeper software to really see it. But it's one thing that you can look at with regards to like type and eating patterns and exercise, like if you, and this is based on like really the precise minute. So I would say if you're using an estimate, like I wouldn't look at this piece quite yet. If you look at those four arrows around your head, the very top left arrow, is around digestion. And it basically, if it's facing, do you see yours, Danielle? Yes. Which arrow, which direction is it facing? The top left arrow is facing towards the right. 
Right. Okay, cool. So basically if it's facing left, it means that you really need to keep yourself like consistently, like well nourished and fed throughout the day. Your brain is like moving fast. So like eating when you wake up, eating before meetings, like keeping yourself nourished is so healthy. Like if you're fasting and you're loving it, like I'll never tell you not to stop it. But often these people can like struggle a little bit more with fasting because they just like, they need that consistent nourishment. Whereas for you and I, where it's facing right, like fasting might be a little bit more natural. Like our, our digestion is a little bit more like inconsistent. It's very much like eat when you're hungry, drink when you're thirsty, maybe it's 10 AM one day and 3 PM the next day, you know? So just like not forcing rigidity or routine around how you, around how you eat. Hmm. Do you, does that resonate with you? Yeah. I'm like, wow, today's, and it's, it's so interesting because habits are so important for me. Like I talk about, you know, and we're using functional mushrooms or adaptogens. The big thing is they're not one magic pill, right? We see the benefits when they're taken consistently. You have to take them day in and day out. But totally. that ranges, you know, I'm always like, do what works for you. Cause sometimes for me, I wake up and I want one thing. And then sometimes it's three hours later. And so yeah. it's just been in a different language. But I'm always like, make sure you do this every day in your own routine, right? In your own flow. And this is really a different uh, lens to say the same thing. Totally. You know, and I think that there's a deeper layer. I see somebody's commenting below Swathi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, then there are deeper layers. And this is what you can't see. Like, for example, for me, like, it's not about like what you eat. It's not like these people should be vegetarians. These people should eat meat, but it's more around like how you eat it. Like for me, as weird as this is, and I've done this since I was young and always made myself wrong for it. Like I need a lot of stimulation and activity around me when I eat, it's good for me to eat standing up when I'm walking, when I'm moving, like, just like when I, like, it really like energizes me. Like I'm not great at like sitting, like, and it really just being at a table for a really long time. Like I've got to keep moving. Whereas like for Swathi, um, theirs is clothes. And so it's really good for them to eat like the same meals every day, like not forcing diversity. Some people really thrive with like warmer food, colder food, like, you know, louder environments, quieter environments, like really like one ingredient at a time. So there's so much that it can speak to around this. Um, and also we all kind of have strongest um, senses. And so whether it's like, you like touching your food, your food's got to look beautiful. So there are so many pieces there. Um, Catherine, your question about exercise as well, you know, one kind of simple piece to look at is that bottom left arrow. And when that's facing, and I think honestly, it's probably good for most of us to just move every day. But what human design would say is that if that arrow is facing left, it's really good to be active every day. Like as a projector, I'm not really good at like exerting myself very intensely, but like just moving in some form every day is really healthy. Whereas if it's facing right, like it just might be a little bit more in flow and you might struggle a little bit to create a lot of like routine around it. So just giving yourself more flexibility and more permission. Okay. Um, should I talk about I have to be alone. Yeah. There's so, so much. It's like the, the eating stuff is so interesting. Cause often when I sit with people and this is so true with so many elements of human design where like, they're like, this reminds me of how I was showing up when I was five, you know? And then I talked myself out of it. Like when I work with kids, like they're like, Oh my God, that's exactly what my kid does. Like I have one client whose son's digestion. He's two is basically all around like having music on and noise and like sound. And basically whenever she feeds him, he's like, mom, like turn the radio on. And she's like, okay. You know, but he just knows. Yeah. Um, so people are asked about the not self theme. So with every type comes a kind of signal that reveals whether we're on or off track. So for projectors, a sense of being off track is bitterness, not feeling appreciated, not feeling recognized, not feeling invited in on track is a sense of success, appreciation, recognition, invitation for generators and manifesting generators. A sense of being off track is frustration, you know, like feeling kind of resentful and dissatisfied in your work or what you're doing. Like maybe you're initiating on track. is just like deep satisfaction manifestors off track is anger where they feel like their flow is being disrupted on track is a sense of peace. They can manifest with ease. Um, and reflectors, a sense of being off track is disappointment often when they're in the wrong spaces and the right and being on track is a sense of surprise. And so it's just a good tool. Like when you're really, um, you know, feeling like you're in an overwhelming sense of your not self, whether it's frustration, bitterness, anger, or disappointment, just letting it be an invitation to have step back and check in and be like, you know what, like, is this really the right thing for me? Is it time to move on? Could I like, can I reevaluate how I'm showing up here? Hmm. So cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious about Tony's question too. What do the right arrows need? Like, can we have a little reference guide? Oh my God. Totally. <laughs> um, okay. So let's see here. Um, I'm like a bird literally. So, um, in terms of the right arrows. So again, there are deeper layers. I'm just like oversimplifying in all the ways, but the right arrows. So they basically are around like our more conscious, like how our mind works. And so say that bottom right arrow is facing right. It, 
it means that when it comes to like thinking about the future and like what you want to create in your life, you might be a little bit challenged to create like really specific goals. Like this is like how much money I want to make. And this is what I do, what I want to do. It's very much around, um, it's around just like, this is how I want to feel, you know, just being like very broad about what you want to create. Whereas if it's facing left, it's often very good to like have specific goals and specific things that you want to create. And that might be a little bit more natural. Don't stick to it, like throw it away after, you know what I mean? But I think just like, I think that, so right is a little bit more non-specific. We say left is a little bit more specific. And the top right one is around the left. If it's facing left, you're meant to be a little bit more strategic. I'm just like really getting into the details of things. Whereas right is like really kind of stepping back and seeing the big picture. And again, this is just like a very specific aspect of our design, but in general, if the arrows are facing left, it's like more rigidity, consistency, it's just like strategic. Whereas if it's facing right, it's more like big picture, just always taking information a little bit more kind of in the flow. Amazing. I do feel like there's a lot of similarities, at least for me, as I'm, I'm looking at these arrows with particularly Vedic astrology. And I'm just noticing like both my arrows on the right side are both facing left, which is like getting things done, you know, and and all of, I have a lot of Capricorn. And so that's all, that's a similar language. And so it just shows whatever kind of lens you choose to investigate yourself further, you can get pieces of information and be be overlap. Just like you said, you talk to people and you're like, oh, that's nothing new. It's just a new framework for me to understand myself. And again, yeah, then give yourself permission to be you fully. Totally. Totally. It's just like, it's really validating more than anything else. And I think that like the most common sense I feel I hear in people, is just like a tremendous sense of relief. It's mm-hmm. like, God, like I said, I spent so much of my life trying to be all the things that I'm not. Is there really another way? Yeah. Um, I see that Jennifer asked about where it came from. Do you mind if I answer that quickly? Just Please, so, people I would love a lot that. Of context. Yes. so it's, it's a, it's a mystical history, which I work with a lot of companies. So it's always funny to tell them again, this is why I like to tell people it's like not a belief system. It's a tool. Take what resonates, leave the rest. So the founder who's no longer alive, his name is Ra Uhuruhu, And he was <clears throat> in Ibiza in 1987 and basically had a very mystical experience where he was walking home one day and heard a voice and the voice was like, it's time to work. And for eight days and eight nights, he channeled the system. And he literally just like received all this information and spent the next 20 years building it out, you know? And it's just so wild because I think it really, like, I think the magic of human design is that it really kind of reveals all these like energetic dynamics that are underneath the surface and both things that we're conscious and aware, but also things that we're very unconscious of, you know? And, and when it came through for him, it very much was like, like this, I think somebody asked earlier about like astrology. It was like, this is a quantum system. Like it's basically pulling together all these amazing modalities to just give us our own unique blueprint and operating manual, you know? And I think that, so it's been really wild. And I'll say when I first started sharing human design in 2015, it was like, people are like, this is so weird. You're like, so niche and out there. And I was like, oh God, but the information is so useful and so helpful. <laughs> and it wasn't really until 2018 that people were like, oh, this is amazing. Tell me more, you know? And so I think it's really blown up in the past couple of years. And I think the question that I always remind my clients of is like, it's not whether it's like, is the system true? It's like, is it helpful? And I find like more than like, you know, 99.999% is like, oh my God. Yeah. Like I have so many clients who are like, I don't get it. I like, I like it literally makes no sense, but this is so helpful. Tell me everything about my team. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just think it, it's use it as a fun tool, use it as an empowering one. It's not a thing to like believe, take, you know, again, take, let it go of the pieces that perhaps are not supportive and like really integrate the ones that are. I love that so much. Yeah. yeah, Jennifer says she has goosebumps. Can't wait to dive more. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a classic projector, Kari. <laughs> yep. Yes, amazing. Do you, should we close? Oh my gosh. Do you want to answer yeah, the other maybe. ones? What's that? Do you want me to answer the other ones? You tell me. Maybe we'll take one more question and yeah. um, then we'll share. As always, um, we have both, we have like so much to leave you all with. We're like, how can we squeeze in as much as possible in this time? Um, so we have as always a four sigmatic discount code. Just as a thank you for being here. You know, we know that wellness is so much more than just what we put in us. That's a big piece, but it's also knowing ourselves, right? And having these tools to show up fully. Everyone that has heard me talk, you know, you've heard me say this a million times, but how can we fill ourselves up so much that we can really show up, you know, without it depleting us, but that it is continually giving. And so part of that is a tool like this and, and take it as a tool, as Aaron said. And um, yeah, so we have discount codes for Aaron's site, for Four Sigmatic site, um, and just want to really like thank you guys for taking the time to take a time out to learn about yourself and to get another tool to show up, you know, maybe a little bit more confident 
in who you are, a little more accepting and loving of who you naturally, you know, are here to be and, and express yourself in that way. Yes, of course. Um, okay, so yeah, maybe one more quick question, then we'll okay. give everyone discount codes and um, yeah, say a good night. Okay. So let me just ask um, Debs and Shannon. So De or sorry, somebody asked about how close do I need to be? So the closer, the better. Like, I will say that like, if you're like, okay, I know it's between born between like five and 6 a.m., probably going to be fine. There are some specific aspects of your design that might change, but often the most important stuff is going to remain consistent. So I would check it out. And if you order something from me, I can also check that out for you. Um, in terms of the blueprint guide. So again, the discount code is four sigmatic. It is 30 plus pages. It is totally customized to your unique design. So it basically walks you through your type, your strategy, how you make decisions, how you best process information, all the areas where you can get taken off track and are here to learn your not self, your line self, all your natural strengths, how you're here to manifest your purpose, teams you work best, and kind of questions that work with all of it. So it's meant to be a resource that you keep returning to, especially when you're perhaps feeling out of alignment. I have a lot of people get for their families, their partners, partners is so fun, their teams. Um, okay, I'll stop. And wait, one more, really quickly. Somebody asked with the incarnation cross. There are 192 of them. We're obviously not going to go through them, but it really speaks to kind of our greater purpose. It's not one of the most actionable pieces of our design, but it's a really nice resource to read into. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much to say. Um, okay. Uh, Aaron, you're a wealth of knowledge. We could keep you here for several more hours at least and go through so many more questions. Um, yeah. As we've mentioned, the discount code for Aaron's site is just four sigmatic. And for Four Sigmatic, if you want to get some product and drink your functional mushrooms and adaptogens um, while you're reading through your human design, um, the discount is Erin Claire Jones. So Erin's full name and then Four Sigmatic, we tried to make it really simple. Um, so you can go to either of our sites and um, have, a little, have a little discount there. I'll email you all tomorrow. I'll share the recording of this. I'll share the discount codes again links to keep in touch with Aaron. This is really the tip of the iceberg. So there's so much more. I've learned so much tonight, Aaron. I'm like, how did an hour just fly by? Um, Crazy, right? <laughs> thank you yeah. for your time, your knowledge. Yeah. For, for making it so simple and accessible. We're really so grateful to have you with us tonight. Such a pleasure. Thank you guys so much. It's been so nice to be in with you guys. Take care.